The world of Dragon Age involves many secrets, one of which is almost everything that surrounds the Black City. So let's see what we can find out about it. Taken from the Codex directly, no traveler to the Fate can fail to spot the Black City. It is one of the few constants in that ever-changing place. No matter where one might be, the city is visible, always far off, for it seems that the rule of geography in the Fade is that all points are equidistant from the Black City. So we can see that the Black City is always there, always in the distance and out of reach. No matter where you are, you can look up to the sky, if you can call it that, and see it. The chant teaches that the Black City was once the seat of the Maker, from whence he ruled the fate left empty when men turned away from him. This is the Chantry version of the story. However, the Tevinter version teaches that it was once the seat of the old gods, and that in the case of Corypheus, Dumat specifically called him there. The Chantry version contradicts what he tells us though, since according to him the city that was supposed to be golden was black and corrupted its dead. He found only chaos and corruption, dead whispers, and that he had seen the throne of the gods and it was empty. Also according to him they didn't corrupt it, as it is said in the Chantry teachings, but they instead discovered the darkness, meaning that it was already corrupted by the time the Magisters found their way there. This corrupt and black city brought with it something they called the darkness, which we today know as the taint. Yet, instead of trying to fight it, the Magisters claimed it as their own, let it permeate their being, and then proceeded to bring it with them to Thedas, triggering the first blight. Strangely enough, in the Deep Roads expedition in Act 1 of Dragon Age 2, we can find tainted lyrium in a tyke that was built before the first blight, meaning that it appears to have been there even before the Magisters forced their way into the Fade, which is in line with the claim that they only discovered the darkness, not created it. So according to Corypheus, they only found it in the city that's already corrupted. There is one interesting similarity between the Chant of Light and the elven belief of the creators. According to the elves, their gods have been locked in the eternal city in the Fade by the dread wolf Fenharel. So in both religions there is mention of a city within the Fade. However, the elven have been around much, much longer than the humans have, so we can assume that that happened long before the Magisters entered the Black City. Interesting to know is also that Avernus, the Grey Warden we were able to meet in the Warden's Keep DLC, tells us that the answer to the Blight and the Taint lies within the city. And that many people believe that we have already been to the Black City, or at least near it. If you imported a world state where Morrigan has a child with the soul of an old god, you can follow him and Morrigan through an Eluvian which leads to the Fate. There you can see, amongst others, a throne with broken chains and red lyrium. But what's more interesting than that is what you can't see, the Black City. It's nowhere to be seen, but instead you are able to see light, even something that seems like sunlight in the normally grey-greenish fate. Yet we still left with the question what the Black City used to be, and there is no definite answer to it. So this part will be speculation, backed by facts from the game. In the conversation with Solus, we can hear him talk of Arlathan, the ancient capital of Elvenan. We hear stories of them living in trees and imagine wooden ramps and Dalish arrowbells. Imagine instead spires of crystal twining through the branches, palaces floating among the clouds. This aligns with the physical appearance of the Black City. It's always floating on an island in the distance with cold and twisted spires. Considering that Solus is a first-hand witness of Arlathan, we can believe his comments on it. Furthermore, Arlathan was supposedly sunk by the Twinter Imperium. However, Abalas, one of the ancient elven centuries within the Temple of Mithal, tells us that the Shemlin did not destroy Arlathan, and that the elven warred upon ourselves. By the time the doors to the sanctuary closed, our time was over. If Dorian is with you in the party, you will ask him what he's talking about since according to history, the Imperium destroyed it in a war, to which Abelas will reply that it was a war of carrion feasting upon a corpse. So by the time the Imperium supposedly destroyed the Elven, their capital was already gone. They merely picked apart the remains. So let us assume that the Black City is Arathan, the capital of the Elves. Why was it banished to the Fate? 
This could be answered with more records from Solus. At the end of Trespasser we find out that while Solus is his actual name, in the time of Arvathan he was known as Fenharel, the Red Wolf. The god that in elven religion tricked the others into locking themselves beyond the veil. However, it is not true, since he told us himself that when they finally went too far, I formed the veil and banished them forever. This leads to the question why he did it. In that conversation he tells us that every alternative was worse, and had he not created the veil, the Avenirus would have destroyed the entire world. The reason they went too far was that they killed Nathar, the only one of the Avenirus that Solus trusted, and even went so far to call a friend. She did not desire power, as the others had. According to him, she was a voice of reason, and in their lust for power, they killed her. A crime for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. Yet, as he said, they would have destroyed the entire world had he not done it, and that's not achieved by killing one of their own. My and many other people's strong suspicion is that the reason they would have destroyed the world is that the Avengers created the taint as a weapon against the titans. He said himself that the reason they came to be remembered as gods was war. That war was most likely fought against the titans, since what mortal mage could kill something like that. Titan's blood is, as we find out in the Descent DLC, Lyrium, and Red Lyrium is simply the tainted version of it. So it seems likely that they created the taint in order to more effectively fight against them. Solus is shown to possess a great knowledge of the taint itself. Evident by saying that the Grey Wardens aren't the only way to stop a blight. After Mythal was killed, the Avenirus proceeded with their plans, which led to Solas creating the Veil and banishing them, together with the city of Arathan, to the Fate. There, it spread and corrupted the city to its now darkened state, which explains why it was already corrupted when the Magisters arrived. One thing that could back this up are his paintings. After main story missions, Solus paints murals in his room in Skyhold, the castle that once belonged to him and the place where he formed the veil. Vale. Those murals show the black city, surrounded by red eyes, always watching over it. One thing that is always depicted with red eyes as well is the red wolf. It may be a coincidence, but I doubt it, since he said himself by forming the veil vale, he destroyed the world of the elves, and he wants to remember that. Thank you for watching. This video was made possible with the help of the Dragon Age subreddit. Imagine instead spikes of crystal. Imagine instead spikes of crystal trining. Fuck me.